Hey there, and today we're going to look at how to install the NetApp On Command System Manager. First things first, you need to make sure that you have PuTTY installed, Java 7 installed, and you've obviously got the file to download. The particular machine I'm on at the moment is a Windows 8 machine that is currently domain joined. I've also got a Windows 2012 R2 server and a storage appliance. So first things first, I'm going to check that I have connectivity to the other machines just to make sure. So checking my domain controller first. I have connectivity with my domain controller. Also checking my storage appliance and I can communicate with my storage appliance. Now checking the other way, the main one I have to check is that PuTTY was through PuTTY and that is that the domain, that the storage appliance is talking to my Windows 8 machine. So logging in, so I've just had the IP address SSL and I'm logging in as root and the root password. And just like everything else, I'm pinging the machine I'm currently on. And stating that it's alive, I've got connectivity from the storage appliance back and to the storage appliance. Now, because you've got Java 7 installed, installing this is a piece of cake. So we'll just start installing it now. Choosing the appropriate language and easiest places to leave it where it was already its default location. Now it's just installing now. I'll uh, pop back once it is finished installing. Awesome, now that it's finished installing, just finish it and then open up the NetApp on command system manager. Now noticing that there is no storage appliances for this, it's just come out of the box, so we need to add our storage appliance. Now in my case I've got one storage appliance with 10 disks, so I only need, with one rack with 10 disks I might say, I only need to add it in once, otherwise I'd have to put it in for each shelf I'm using. Now to add one, simple as clicking on add and then putting in the IP address of the storage appliance. Now notice that I have the storage appliances now come up under my list. If you had other storage appliances and you've added them, they would come in underneath it. Now to start managing the storage appliance, you need to double click on the particular one you want to manage and you get another window opening. Now you need to put in the correct credentials. Now the credentials in this case were the same ones that I put into PuTTY earlier to remote into the machine. So mine is root and the appropriate password. Now it's handy tip to save your credentials just makes it a little bit easier later on. You don't have to, it just means you have to put in every time. Right, now that I'm logged in, it's a good time to get a bit of a feel for what's around and what this, thing, this particular program can do. So going into storage, to go into different sections you can either click on the top one and the icons or go on the drop down list. Now the first time you go into storage, this one's already set up, you would have to, up in the top corner, you just click button to set it up, it's two seconds, not overly that much to do. Now in the already storage, bits and pieces like that, and then you've got all your configuration and then good old diagnostics anything in particular. Now while I'm logged in here it's a good thing to make sure that your DNS is on your storage appliance. Makes life a lot easier later on. So this particular one I've already set up the DNS but uh, set up be just in the top corner and you'd basically put in the appropriate credentials and addresses and domains that your particular storage appliance would be needing to work on. Awesome. So that's how to 
get a bit of a feel for where things are and making sure that it's kind of set up properly. Now if you do get lost at any particular time or wanting to find out any information on any other bits and pieces that you want to do, say, hey look, I'm having an issue creating a LUN. Easiest place to do that is you help in the top corner. And you got you can go, it's got the same men similar menu structure to the program itself, or you can search for whichever bits and pieces you're looking for. So there we go, LUNs, how to create, right there. Now that we've looked at the um, actual NetApp command, NetApp on command system manager, let's have a look at what would happen to do bits and pieces with the storage appliance itself. So back into PuTTY and checking in your storage appliance, SSH and opening the connection, logging in as root. Now, once you've logged in here, it's just like you've, you've logged into the actual machine, you're on that specific command line interface and you could try whatever you need to do. So you saw me ping earlier, you can type in stuff like help and it will give you all the particular commands you're after or say I'm wanting to look at how to license my SCSI, NFS or something else I just would type in license and help uh, remembering that it's the American way of spelling it and it comes up with all the specific extensions that you can use. So there we go, there's the basics on how to install the NetApp on command system manager, have a bit of a feel for how to get around bits and pieces, and if you do get lost, how to use the command line interface of the actual storage appliance to help find what you need to do. A couple of tips and tricks for having issues if it's not installing. One, Making sure that you have Java 7 installed is you have to, otherwise you'll get start installing it and it will stop straight away saying, hey look, I need this particular piece of software. The other is to make sure that you have the appropriate connectivity between all your devices, not just correct IP addresses and subnets, make sure your DNS is correct as well. So there we go. Thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful.